It was 1947, deep in the Uganda forest. A British virus hunter named George Dick was researching the dreaded yellow fever virus, putting rhesus monkeys in cages, letting them be bitten by mosquitoes to isolate the virus from their blood. But George Dick noticed something strange in rhesus monkey number 766, a virus never before seen. He called it Zika after the forest. And when he published his paper in 1952, Zika had not yet been seen in humans, but it would be soon. Zika is a member of the nasty flavivirus family, including yellow fever, dengue, West Nile, Japanese encephalitis virus. All are transmitted through the bite of a mosquito. Once inside the blood, the virus reproduces and when another mosquito comes along and feeds on that infected blood, it picks up the bug and carries it to the next host. If you've been bitten and, you, uh, and infected with the, uh, with the virus and you get on a plane and you go to another country that happens to have the same mosquito vector and that mosquito bites you, then very quickly you've uh, set up the circumstances for uh, rapid growth and transmission. The first recorded human carrier was in Nigeria in 1968. But over the next decade, Zika began traveling east as human infections appeared in India, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Zika had fully infiltrated Africa and Asia. But it was another 40 years before Zika made news again. April 2007, on a small Pacific island called Yap in Micronesia. When a rash, red eyes, and joint pain started making people sick, the cause? Zika. The first time it had been seen outside of its usual range. Scientists warned the virus was headed for the Americas. In 2013, Zika showed up on Easter Island, triggering the largest outbreak to that point. Then it traveled to all of the islands of French Polynesia. The next summer, several Polynesian teams headed to Rio for the World Sprint Championship canoe races. And experts think Zika hitched a ride with them, hiding in their blood. It was August 2014, and the Zika virus had landed in the Americas. A year later, May 2015, the first confirmed case of a Zika virus infection in Brazil in the northeast part of the country. By October, 14 Brazilian states had confirmed the spread of Zika. And the virus had also jumped the border into Colombia. By November, it was in Venezuela and was marching north to Central America, showing up in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Mexico. Still causing only mild disease, but something disturbing was happening in Northeast Brazil. Health officials noticed an unusual increase in a severe birth defect called microcephaly. Brazil typically reports about 150 to 200 cases of microcephaly per year, and in the past year they've had uh, just over 3,000 cases. Then laboratory tests found evidence of Zika virus in a few of the victims. So on December 1st, Brazil issued the alert, making the chilling association for the first time. It's an association that has not been proven. The type of um, studies that would confirm a cause and effect linkage or a strong association have not yet been done, and I think it's a first order of business. By mid-January, the World Health Organization was linking Zika virus infection with the risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome, a neurological disorder causing muscle weakness and temporary paralysis. By now, the world was in full Zika alert. Health officials in El Salvador advised women to delay pregnancy. Health Canada advised pregnant women to consider delaying travel to the affected areas. Airlines started offering refunds. And today, the World Health Organization declared the emergence of microcephaly to be a public health emergency. Evidence is growing and it's getting strong. All based on the precautionary principle. You never know whether it's an overreaction or not until all the evidence is in. Most people infected with Zika will never know they have it. But in the era of SARS, Ebola and international travel, no public health official is prepared to take a chance. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Toronto.